What's going on everybody? My name is Darnell from Nice Gaming and I want to welcome you to the first episode of First 48. In this series, I'll be playing the first 48 minutes of a video game and giving you a review based off of that gameplay in 4 minutes and 48 seconds or less. Lucky for us, this episode covers a long-awaited remake that uses photography as a gameplay mechanic. So let's take a shot at Pokemon Snap from the Nintendo Switch. The game starts you off on Florio Island in the Lentol region. You play as a young research assistant to Professor Mirror where he is investigating the Illumina phenomenon in that region. Not much is explained to us about what the phenomenon is or what it does to Pokemon, other than that it makes them glow with a bluish whitish aura. It is our job to explore the different areas of the Lentol region and research Pokemon in their natural habitat to uncover the truth about the Illumina phenomenon. Even in the first few moments of the game, I can tell that this will be very visually pleasing to play. The colors are vibrant and eye-catching and the textures of each Pokemon are unique depending on if they're birds, insects, or fish. The object of the game is to explore the different areas of the Lentol region and capture photos of Pokemon in their natural habitat. You take a ride in your Neo 1 vehicle that moves along a predetermined route at a slow enough speed for you to take a few photos. You're only allowed 72 shots every ride, so you won't get every Pokemon on your first go through but this encourages players to go back and get the right photo for the Pokemon that they're looking for. Once your expedition is complete, it's time to bring your photos to Professor Mare for him to grade. Allow me to break it down for you. Your photos are rated between one to four stars. You capture a Pokemon not doing anything spectacular that's usually a one star photo. However, the more you come back to a route, you might capture the Pokemon doing something out of the normal that it's never done before. Those are the four star photos that you wanna capture. After that, Professor Mirror gives you research points on your photo based off of factors including pose, direction, size, placement, the background, and if you happen to get other Pokemon in the frame as well. Now what would a Pokemon game be without a day and night cycle? The nighttime offers new Pokemon for you to take photos of and new behaviors for you to observe. Pokemon seen in the daytime may also act a little different towards you at night. Also, nighttime shooting offers a chance to notice a few Pokemon that glow a little bit brighter than most. Since each route is roughly two to three minutes long, this means hours and hours of replay value trying to get the right photo of the right Pokemon that you're proud of. Taking photos while in the Neo 1 took a while to get adjusted to, but after a few explorations, the controls felt like second nature. One joystick moves a subject point in the middle of your screen, while the other one maneuvers the entire viewfinder of your camera. It's about finding the right balance between moving the two that will allow you to capture a Pokemon flying overhead or track a few Pokemon playing close to your vehicle. A key feature that you'll use during your exploration is a scan. Scanning, well, scans the environment and lets you know of Pokemon in the immediate area. Scanning will also alert the player if there's something special going on that they might want to pay close attention to. Pokemon will sometimes react to your scans while exploring as well. Some may flat out ignore you and some might fly away. Others may even strike a pose for you if you catch them at just the right moment. Another important tool in your arsenal is a fluff fruit. The fluff fruit is a throwable item that will get the attention of some Pokemon. If you throw it close enough to a certain Pokemon, it will cause a unique reaction that you might want to get on camera. If you remember, those are the shots we're looking for. After you're done exploring and showing your awesome photos to Professor Mirror, you now have the chance to add specific photos to your collection. Just because a photo wasn't a four star photo, that doesn't mean it can't be amazing. Saving a photo to my personal album introduced me to my current favorite feature of Pokemon Snap, which is my Pokemon Lightroom ability. Pokemon Snap allows me to edit my photos and post, and it's not as extensive as Adobe or anything like that, but I can change the brightness, the contrast, and even throw a couple of filters on there to really make the photo my own. I was immediately drawn in by this video game. Not because it's a photography based video game and I happen to like photography, but because this felt like a breath of fresh air to the Pokemon franchise. I'm a long time fan of Pokemon, but the same formula of collecting badges, filling the Pokedex, and hunting for shinies couldn't hold my interest anymore. Pokemon Snap made me care about Pokemon again. I want to explore the cavern and see what the Zubat are up to. I enjoy seeing Grokey and Pichu play together, or catching a score buddy taking a nap on a Torterra. The environment feels real to me, and that's what makes this game so fun to play. You never know what's going to happen on each exploration, so it's a new experience every single time you pick up the game. Between the high replay value, the vibrant colors, the interactive Pokemon, and the easy to understand gameplay, Pokemon Snap is 100% worth it.
Looks like I made it just in time. I want to thank you all for watching the first episode of The First 48. Make sure you hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and turn the notification bell on so you can keep up to date with our weekly videos. Also, you can comment down below if there's another video you'd like to see me do a First 48 review on. Now if you excuse me, there's a Pichu and a Groki playing in a bed of flowers over there, and I've been trying to get a picture of them all day. Just before you start snapping Pokemon, remember these three very important rules. Rule number one, keep your hands and feet inside the Neo 1 at all times. Rule number two, don't feed the ducklets bread, it's terrible for their stomach. And rule number three, and this is the most important one, stay nice.